I've been doing this hobby for a while now, and whilst my painting is by no means fantastic, what it is is fairly quick, fairly efficient, and fairly lazy. In this video, I'm going to run through some quick tips and hacks that I've found for making your painting look decent on the tabletop, whilst also not taking very long and being quite relaxing. Tip number one is actually using thicker paint. So you'll have seen in online guides and in tutorials that you should always thin down your paints. And I think that this is correct. You should always thin down your paints. Uh, but if you make your paint slightly thicker, then maybe the tutorial or guide suggests, add a little bit less water. What that means is that you need fewer coats to cover the details. And yes, those coats may not be as smooth, but if you can use one fewer layer to build up a color, if you can go from three to two or from two to one in some cases, then that significantly speeds up the time it takes to do painting. In some cases, I will use paint straight from the pot as well, which I know is absolutely not recommended. Uh, but for smaller details, smaller areas or areas that aren't gonna be as visible, painting straight from the pot is absolutely fine. Tip number two is um, use the right sized brush. And this tip kind of goes two ways. Um, if you're painting a really large area, then you probably want to use a larger brush. You want to use the largest size possible. However, if you're trying to paint smaller details, what I tend to do is use a brush which is maybe one size smaller than would absolutely be possible. So what this means is that I'm able to be a bit less careful, a bit more relaxed with my painting and not have to worry so much about making mistakes due to the size of the brush. It makes it easier to get into smaller details and cracks and crevices. Um, and yes, it might take slightly longer overall to paint some areas, but I think that the trade-off in terms of how relaxing it is, is absolutely worth it. You want painting to be fun, at least I hope you do, um, and not being stressed about going over the wrong parts, having to go back is going to make things a lot easier for you. Tip number three, um, all of the models in my armies, or 95% of them at least, use the same basing scheme, um, and it's sand painted in crap, grey and beige craft paint and a homemade wash made using black paint and washing up liquid and water. You don't want to waste your money and you don't want to waste your time using your best paints to do basing schemes. The reason that I paint all of my models with the same bases, or at least 95% of them, um, is because all of my armies can then be used together. And also it means that um, I don't have to think about how I'm gonna base my models. When I get to that stage of the paint job, I've got a unit that's pretty much ready to go. I just think, okay, cool. I'll bake up, break out my basing supplies, my black paint, my gray paint, my beige paint, uh, and my homemade black wash, and I will get the bases done. The next tip I have is to do with edge highlighting. Uh, this is tip number four. Edge highlighting sucks. I hate it and I wish I never had to do it. If I ever have to edge highlight something, what I'll probably do is pick one color to edge highlight. So instead of trying to edge highlight all of the colors on the model, I'll find the color which would benefit the most from edge highlighting, or is the easiest to edge highlight. So that might be the armor of a space marine, it might be the weaponry of an Eldar Guardian, uh, or it might be some other area of the model that I know if I edge highlight this, it's going to really pop and it's going to bring the model to life. The rest of the Colors will get dry brushes, layers, washes, etc. But I try not to do more than one set of edge highlighting on any tabletop quality model. Another great technique to use if you don't want to do edge highlighting is what I like to call scratchy highlighting. Um, and that means taking paint, which is maybe slightly thicker again, see the previous tip, and using that to um, make a sort of scratchy edge highlight, which isn't as neat, it isn't as precise, um, but what it does is give a feeling of texture to a part of a model. And this is really great for leather and also for silver and gold parts, metallic parts. Tip number five, six, is about using a priming stick. So there are loads of ways that you can set up a priming booth or a spray booth to prime your models. The easiest, quickest, and laziest way I've found is to just grab a small 
length of wood and lightly super glue your models to it. Sticking them this way means that you can hold the stick and prime the models in every direction um, and you don't need to worry about them falling, you don't need to faff around with boxes and that kind of thing. Uh, and finally, tip number seven. Tip number seven is about keeping a recipe diary. So this might seem antithetical to our premise here, which was lazy painting tips. Keeping a painting diary is obviously more effort than not keeping a painting diary. But again, I find that Keeping a list of the paints that I've used for a particular color or the techniques that I've used to paint a particular area on a model um, is, are, is really important and does save me time over the long run. I don't have to think about how I painted a particular color when I come back to it and I don't have to think about um, how I might paint a particular colour. I pretty much only paint all of my colours one way, and so having them written down means, okay, I need to go in and paint red, I know how I paint red, I can get the red paint, and I can do it the same every time without having to think about it. It saves me a lot of headspace, and I think overall it saves me time, and allows painting to be more fun and more relaxing. I forgot one. Actually, finally, um, I would recommend if you're going to use contrast paints, I would recommend using a metallic undercoat. So contrast can often struggle uh, when it comes to going over smooth surfaces, leaving unsightly pooling and that kind of thing. If you use a metallic base coat, something like a silver or a gold, then a lot of the colours, especially the more rich colours like blues and reds, have no problem creating a smooth coat over that. And it creates a really rich vibrant colour. Red, I've tried it with blue, I've tried it with green, um, and it looks really good. I absolutely would recommend trying metallic undercoat when you're painting with contrast paints. So that's it for my list of quick tips on how to paint a bit more lazily. If you have your own tips, please let me know in the comments. I'm always on the lookout for more ways to paint more efficiently, to take less time to get tabletop ready models, and to put less effort in and make painting more relaxing. I hope you enjoyed this list. Um, if you would like to see more videos from me like this, uh, please let me know. Please subscribe to this channel uh, because it really helps me out. Thanks, bye bye. Painting tips, we're doing painting tips today. <laughs>